Hello and welcome to the sessions where we will be discussing about the Ansible interview question and answers and also for discussion on the projects. Uh, let's say the some real time scenarios that we will be that I will be sharing which you can do in order to gain more confidence into Ansible. Okay, so I'll be sharing the scenarios that you can do. Try to do it on your own. So let's uh, get quickly started. What is Ansible and why are we even using Ansible when we have other tools like Chef Puppet, right? Salt in market. So then our answer should be like, yes, Ansible, it is a configuration management tool, which obviously helps us to manage configuration of devices or VMs remotely. Devices, when I say, Ansible can also manage the configuration for networking devices like routers, switches, gateways, or the IP phones. So almost whatever devices we can think of which have operating system in them, Ansible can manage their configuration. So it helps us in managing the configuration. Why, what do we mean when we say configuration? It means that like if some new installation we need to do, if some changes in, in a config file we need to do. So all those comes under configuration management. It is very highly scalable and can manage up to thousands of devices at a time. So obviously Ansible depends on completely the state of configuration zero or one, based on which we say that present or absent can be the state. And why, if they say why Ansible, then your answer should be Ansible is the easiest tool to manage. How it is easiest? It doesn't involve any agent configuration like master slave architecture doesn't have, Ansible doesn't have master slave architecture. So that is why it is very easy to manage. Second thing, it is easy to understand and files, the configuration files that we write. They are very, very easy to understand and write because they are completely based on Python and are very friendly. And the language is very user friendly. The YAML that we write for Ansible, it is very user friendly. A simple key value pairs is what we use to write a YAML. So understanding and learning as a new skill, Ansible is the easiest of all. So that is why Ansible is in more demand. And that is why we also select Ansible for most of our use cases. Now, if interviewer may ask you that where will we maintain the information related to the remote devices, or VMs for which we want to manage the configuration. Then our answer should be simple. We can manage them in inventory. Either we can mention the device details in inventory file, which is the default inventory file and is in our default location that is slash it is slash Ansible, or we can mention it anywhere, but we have to use hyphen I flag and then run the entire Ansible command with hyphen I flag, give the full path of our inventory file. Okay, so we can write inventory file anywhere, but we have to make sure that we are passing it dynamically during the runtime. What is the significance of Ansible config file? So we have seen it in details that how config file can help us. You need to just explain that, okay, see Ansible config file defines the behavior of Ansible. When we say defines the behavior of Ansible, let's say if suppose I don't want to maintain the inventory within in the default file, Neither I want to pass it during the runtime, but still I want to make sure that wherever I mention my inventory, it is easily readable by Ansible. It is easily traceable by Ansible. So I can mention the path of config file. I can create my own custom config file and I can mention the path of inventory. I can mention the path of roles. So the way Ansible looks for its different files, right? Like inventory file, the, like the way it looks for roles the way it looks for and now if you remember one another configuration we saw was host key checking so whatever configuration related things that control the behavior of ansible right how it is going to run all those things can be controlled using config file so that is why it is very critical file in ansible so now a next question may obviously come he may ask you how to pass dynamic inventory file you have to say that okay we can use hyphen i flag and we can also pass a python script which will dynamically collect the information about the hosts but our inventory should be collected in such a way using the scripts that the format of inventory should be something like i should be able to list down my inventory when i want to Okay, so the listing should be there in key value format. Only then it will be accepted by inventory. And how will I mention the inventory? I will mention the inventory using hyphen I during runtime. Okay, so next is like, they may also ask you what are group bars. 
now how will we say what are group words how will we explain it so group words generally help us to mention our inventory categorized in group of hosts and they have these words helps us to mention the communication methods or let's say the authentication details for our inventory okay communication method or authentication details for a group of hosts which we have mentioned in inventory for a group of particular hosts i will be mentioning the variable for that particular group then again i can mention uh, variables for other group so group wise i can mention the variables that is why we call them as group wars how do we manage windows machines using ansible favorite question this will definitely come to you never say we will use http because the, the port that we generally enable that is 5985 or 598 so you cannot say that all the management we will do through http protocol okay that is just for connectivity to the windows uh, it acts as a windows endpoint so that we can connect to windows but rest of the management rest of the command line management everything happens through winrm winrm service helps us to do the entire windows management using ansible so what we generally do we simply go ahead and uh, allow the winrm traffic to our host we have to allow the winrm traffic in the network security group of the windows vm only then my vm where my ansible is installed can reach to the windows vm so what we generally do we enable the winrm in nsg of our host machine and second thing that we do is we install py winrm which is the library that helps us to do the windows remote management through ansible so py winrm has all the modules available which we will need for windows configuration management using ansible okay so your answer should be we will allow the winrm protocol in network security group of our vm and second we will install py winrm in ansible vm where our ansible is installed why because it will have all the necessary modules required for windows management a kind of library it is now question may also come what are facts so when we talk about facts we have already discussed that facts are nothing but they are the details about the vms or hosts that we have mentioned in our inventory file they are the details about our host of our inventory file now when we say details what all details they are the properties of all the devices right when we say they are the properties it can be the installed operating system it can be the ip address it can be the os family to which the installed operating system belongs the os distribution almost all the details about my inventory hosts that is what facts are now if we allow fact gathering then it gathers facts ansible when runs its playbook it will first step it will do is gather facts if you have not mentioned anything related to facts by default it will always gather facts but if you have mentioned false for fact gathering then it will not gather any facts what is the best method to make our content reusable and redistributable how we can make our code pretty much reusable and redistributable with the help of roles right we create roles to make our code as much reusable as possible now next they may ask you what are ansible modules so modules in ansible are it important that you have to mention from a restful service standpoint for operation to be it important clients can perform the same result by using modules in ansible this is very technical term we can directly say the functionalities which are available to us through which we can do the configuration management through which we can run our commands through which we can perform action on all the remote hosts that is modules they are the functionalities available to us now what makes ansible stand out from rest of the configuration management tool we have already talked about it when we talked about what is ansible and why ansible still if you see it is simple simple to learn simple to manage agentless it makes it simple to manage power flow full and flexible obviously it is scalable and pretty much powerful efficient so modules right the the basic building blocks are modules so writing ansible becomes very easy so it's very efficient now one question may definitely come to you when you apply for devops engineer or let's say infrastructure uh, engineer 
that can be what is infrastructure as a code and how ansible helps us do that in one simple line i can say converting our entire infrastructure into code is what infrastructure as a code is means we are managing or maintaining our infrastructure in form of code in repository what do we mean by that means if next time whenever we need any infrastructure to be in place if we want to create a vm we will simply run a code we will not go through the manual activities so we are maintaining our infrastructure requirements with the help of code so that is why it is called as infrastructure as a code now how it helps us it helps us because if you try to build infrastructure through native methods through old methods you have to go through lot of struggle like right? you have to create the infrastructure install os harden it install the necessary packages a very lengthy process but code can help you to automate everything right either you write scripts or whatever everything can be automated and you don't need to take so much of a time now ansible though we call it as a configuration management tool but it also helps us to deploy infrastructure so we can write if you remember we saw some of the playbooks where we were creating virtual machines resource groups in cloud right so we were creating infrastructure in fact using ansible so ansible helps us even in this field infrastructure as a code by helping us to write the infrastructure related playbooks be it azure be it and uh, aws be it google cloud now obviously this question was that would have been discussed earlier but now what is playbook in simple language you can say playbook is where all the action happens it consists of multiple plays one or more plays which in turn have multiple tasks within them so in short ansible when we want ansible to manage configuration for our remote host the declarative syntax that we write that is called as playbook the code that we write in ansible for managing our infrastructure that is playbook which is written in yaml and yaml is the syntax of yaml is it is simple map map structure how it has all key value pairs mapped to each other starts with three hyphens and with three dots members of same list they follow the same indentation level these are some of the points that you can make that you can put forward to make yourself your stand more strong so this way you need to answer rather than mugging up everything you need to answer what you have understood now they may also ask you that okay if config file is uh, let's say if i create my custom config file where should i your answer should be you can keep your config file wherever you want but make sure that the playbook that you are trying to run those playbooks also reside in the same location where your config file is if you are creating any custom config file why because whenever you run your playbook ansible will first look for the config file in your in the current directory from where you are running the playbook right so it's better if we keep our config file along with our playbooks if we are creating custom config files at all but inventory files or roles can be kept anywhere provided your config file should be having the path of them proper path of them wherever you are storing them so that is more important so remember config file needs to be kept in the directory from where you are running the playbook so it's better if we follow the structure where we can have a directory let's say for a particular project if you want to manage the ansible code so you keep the uh, you create a directory related to the project name keep your config file there keep your roles there keep your inventory file there keep everything in one directory but properly structure them then what happens you don't have to worry about mentioning the details again and again though you have to mention that where is your uh, inventory file and where is your uh, roles but you will at least know that they are in the same directory you don't have to look for them somewhere and then get the entire path from there and mention it in the config file so they will be in the same location okay so you have to answer very tactfully when you are answering the ansible questions you have to answer very tactfully and to the point 
if you mention anything which interviewer doesn't want to hear, he'll drill you down. So you should be very careful when you are answering answerable questions. So anyways, all the best if you are going for interviews, all the best if you are going to implement it in your current project or you are taking up new project for Ansible. All the best for whatever you are going to, uh, wherever you are going to apply the skill that you have learned here. All the best wishes. Thanks. Thank you.